I'm not here to make up the numbers. I'm here to race and I'm setting out to win. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna regret saying that, aren't I? So, I'm in Adelaide, South Australia for Raddle Gravel. We got 108 kilometers, over 2,000 meters of elevation. We've got gravel tracks, we've got big climbs, we've got road sections, and we're gonna have some wild racing. So this is the first ever edition of Raddle Gravel, and it's held in association with the Tour Down Under, which is the World Tour season opening race. Now there are two different race distances to choose from here. The slightly longer 108 kilometer version, which I'm doing in the pro category. And then there's also the slightly shorter 70 kilometer version. Now both routes head out from McLaren Vale going east and start with an absolute brute of a climb before the different routes split. Now this is gonna be one hell of a race, but before I can even start thinking about that, I need to go sign in and collect my number board. Okay, we are about 50 minutes out from the start of the event now. I've collected my number board. I've got the gels taped on the top of my bike to make sure I'm fueled correctly. I'm loading the route up onto my head unit. Other than that, it's pretty much like all systems go. I'm pretty much kitted up. It's getting super busy. The sun's coming up. It's starting to look absolutely beautiful because until the sun made an appearance, it was actually kind of cold here. I'm excited for race day. It feels like it's starting to get a little bit serious now and the nerves are starting to kick in, especially seeing as I've said, I'm trying to race this thing, we're going out to do well. Why do I put this pressure on myself? Okay, it's starting to get busy now, like everyone's getting ready to line up and starting to like edge forwards more and more. I think because everyone's panicked about how massive the climb is at the start, no one wants to start too far back. So I better pay attention, make sure I can see the front, and then it's game on. See you in a bit. Yeah, boy. Doesn't went to start the whole the whole thing off. I think I was probably close to around the eighth or ninth row. It was it was like full systems go, and all of a sudden I found myself right on the right hand side of the road, and I just managed to squeeze and dart all out the side to get past everybody. And just coming into the base of the starting climb, I actually <laughs> actually made it right to the start of the race. It was so and cool, and then all of a sudden it it just dawns on you. You look up and there's this absolute just wall in front of you and you're just like, oh my God, I've got to ride up that and I'm already like close to my limit. The start of the race was effectively 20 minutes, as hard as you could possibly ride. I kind of made it to the top of the climb with the front of the race in sight, but I was kind of like that second tier level of riders back, maybe in and out of the top 10. All of a sudden, I was like, I can't sustain this. I found myself in a group of probably 15 riders, which is pretty big, but it was 15 riders, 14 bikes, two people were on a tandem. All of a sudden, I found myself like on some guy's wheel, and he was absolutely drilling it. And all of a sudden, I'm just hanging on as much as I possibly can, and it's got harder and harder and harder and harder. I glance over my shoulder, thinking I need to pull out of the line here to let somebody else in because I'm going to get dropped. I glanced over, nobody behind me. 
So I was like, well, I've only got one option here, just to grip my teeth and hang on. But I'm glad I did because it towed us all the way up to the next group, which I think was almost like the second group out on the like, race at the time. In my head, I was thinking, this is a great place to be. It's, okay, I'm racing, I've recovered a little bit now. I'm not quite in the thick of the action, but we're pretty much at the sharp end of the race. Like, I kind of feel like I'm doing myself proud, but also suffering for it. Through the middle section of the race is probably where it was most undulating. Lots of changes of direction, small little kickers, which to start with all seem fine and dandy. But after you've done a few of those, you're getting out of the saddle, trying to put your effort in as best as possible. And you can just feel like the fatigue and ache in the muscles of your legs. And all of a sudden you can feel that like effort level creeping up on you and the fatigue is starting to set in and you're like, you look through on your head you and think, right, I've got 50, 60 k to go here, we're only just at the halfway mark. I'm thinking, am we gonna make it to the end? Are we gonna be in the front group? I don't know, but it's a case of sitting tight and just thinking, right, I've gotta like trust the process here. I know what's coming up, I can see the elevation, eat, drink, fuel myself up, recover when I can, and really just keep, keep chipping away and ticking along at it. To achieve 2,000 metres of elevation in that distance, you've got to have some pretty big climbs. And in the back half of the race, there was probably two significant climbs. One of them I got over absolutely fine in our group. The second one, I was just hanging and hanging on until I could just see myself sliding to drift off of the back of our little group of four or five of us. It was moments like that that kind of took me back to the days of racing when you're really having to like grit your teeth and think, come on, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. The guys are like just up in the distance. Come on, I've got to make it back on here. I've got to, I've got to do it. I've got to do myself proud. Thankfully I did, which was a real good like achievement within the race. Now rats can shine and jokers got civil lining and holy Mary sing songs in the wet rain. Walk ahead. As we're approaching the last 20 kilometers of the race, it's kind of like a significant change, not only in the terrain, but also the surfaces that you're riding on. All of a sudden, it's really hard packed gravel, super wide, flat, fast, lots of sections and turns onto roads. And the 20K, last 20K literally like went just like that. Blink of an eye, you're seeing the 20K sign to go, 10K sign to go, and you think, how, how is this ticking along? And you look down at your head unit and you think, no wonder the kilometers are ticking off so fast. We're doing like 55 kilometers an hour on gravel, which is absolutely insane. We're coming into the finish line. The barriers are coming up at the side. You glance up, you can see the finish line gantry. There's just three of us coming into the finish. And I'm thinking, right, this is my only opportunity here to move up two positions at most. I can't change anything else now. There's one guy behind we've just dropped. I've just got to give it my all. get out of the saddle, I try to sprint, there's just nothing left, so I roll into the finish line. Oh boy, that's one of the toughest things I've done for a long time. So, I have literally no idea where I finished. One thing that I do know for sure, uh, if we rewind back to the start, 
think we can rule out the win. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, right, reassess the situation. I actually think I finished in what was the third group, right? Bloody awful. Three hours, 16 minutes. I reckon we were like 12 minutes behind the leaders. Let's grab a cold drink, sit down, actually sum up what the hell actually happened. Disappointed at the moment, but as I say, sat here now thinking, I couldn't have done anything more. That was the, that was physically all my body had to give. I had an absolute smashing time doing it. 17th place. I think I can hold my head high sat here now. Like these guys are, are some of the best gravel racers in the world. And when you're out there trying to mix it with them, is when, it's when you really know it and you realize that the top guys are really like at another level and it's kind of insane to be amongst that. And I kind of, I feel like I've done myself proud today just being in that situation. The goal I set out to come here was not to make, make up the numbers, to get stuck into the race. And I said, of course, everyone comes here, wants to race and wants to win. It was always an ambitious goal. And it, <laughs> it's a risky move saying that you want to win something because really you're half setting yourself up to fail. There's only one outcome. Then if it all goes perfectly, it's a success. Anything other than that feels like a failure. But sitting here now, I don't feel like I failed at all at this thing. It's, it feels like a huge success to me to come here and race and feel like I rolled back five years when I was still racing as a pro. It's like a really cool, like exciting thing to do. I feel kind of honored to be able to come here and go through that process and experience such a cool event and do that with so many like-minded people that are just, some people are set out to race, some people are set out to have fun, some people's goal is to win, some people's goal is to literally just finish, be that the longer route or the shorter route. And that's probably, well, I mean, that's just the spirit of gravel, isn't it? Like, what more can you say? 